Yeah. I have all of chance to read the method of studying for this program. Yes? No? Don't be silent in here. Yes? No? No. No. no? no? I see binders. Did you read the first couple of pages? Yes? Yeah. You did. Yes, I know you, but what happened to you? Why are you hands folded? Where's your book? I will loan you mine. <laughs> Don't write in it. <laughs> All right. So you know the whole program is broken into two sections. First one is AML, the second part is government <coughs> risk and compliance. So we're going to start with AML. Now, when you look at your schedule, there are different lectures for different units. Notice that? You did read that part. Yes. Yeah. Every lecturer <laughs> delivers differently. Every other, each lecturer brings their own experience to the forefront. But let me tell you about me. I don't read when I come to class. I expect you to read before you come to class. Rule number one. So if you come here, you haven't read, you're going to be lost. Number two, my aim is to help you pass this course. I'm only doing the first leg. When you get to the other legs, it's up to you. So for this first class, I'm going to go slow because it's the introduction and everybody's not at the same level. When we come back next week, I will not be going slow at all. I would have expected that you would have read one and two, and you're prepared for me. I ask questions, you give me the answers. Sounds good? When you read your chapters, you'll see there are lots of footnotes and references. I'm going to tell you now, you need to read them. Do not gloss over them. Otherwise, when you get to the exam, you will not be able to give an A answer. You'll only be skimming. They will fail you if you regurgitate. So that means at the end of the day, you must know the material that is in this book in your own words, even though it's open book. And you have to be able to cite references, cite cases, know what's currently happening in the market in order to get an A. The aim is always to try for an A. Don't try for a pass. You will fail. They do not mark easy. No slack. And answer the question. We all on the same page? We agree? I don't like failures. So that means get to work. Paid a lot of money, you have to put the effort in. So let's start. Let's go to the question. You have the question? The first assignment? First assignment. First assignment. First assignment. You call it essay, call it essay thing. First assignment. Yes, first assignment. You look lost. First assignment. You don't have it. I only have a couple I just printed just now. You, don't have, you have one? I need to make more? Yes. Okay, yes. We. Why well, my, well, my thing still here? Because I just got it. Oh, okay. How many more we need? Okay, let me make some more. Yes, that's it there.
That's it? Everybody has one? and 3,500 words. In most instances, you have more than you need. So that means you're going to have the screen line. I'm going to suggest to you right now that you have to begin reading. As you begin reading, focus on the question. You understand what I mean? The reading is going to be general. But you're going to have to pull out from your readings what you need to answer this question. So let's start. It says profit vehicles play an essential role in the global economy. So first you have to be able to define what is a corporate vehicle. When you write it, you're not going to say the definition of corporate vehicle is. This is how you're going to begin your research. First you have to define or know what is a corporate vehicle. Wait on the question. Whatever, okay. So corporate vehicles play an essential role in the global economy conducting a wide range of legitimate commercial and entrepreneurial activities. Mm. So that means that when you have finished your reading and you've decided which creature is a corporate vehicle, then that creature has to be one that can be used for commercial and entrepreneurial activities. Mm -hmm. If you select the wrong vehicle, you're not going to have enough to write. First thing. Second thing, whatever you choose, you have to make sure that there are material out there to justify what you're going to say. Okay? However, they are being misused by criminals to disguise and convert the proceeds of their crimes. So that means that when you find your corporate vehicle that are used for legitimate commercial entrepreneurial activities, you need to find sources to back up how they have been misused for criminal purposes, to disguise and convert, convert the proceeds of their crimes. And our unit today is going to talk about proceeds of crime. That is the stages of money laundering. The appeal to criminal lies in the fact that corporate vehicles can be misused to circumvent controls by disguising the identity of known or suspected criminals and the source of funds or assets. So they're talking about a couple things. One, how are these vehicles used to circumvent the law? That's the first thing. And secondly, how do they use it to disguise the identity? <coughs> so the corporate vehicles that you choose have to be ones where the identity can be hidden. So then they refer you to an FATF report. Next class, we're going to talk about these international bodies that regulate this money laundering business. So the FATF report, Guidance on Transparency and Beneficial Ownership, is one you should read by next week, along with Chapter 2. With me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it says, using typologies to explain how corporate vehicles are misused by criminals to launder the proceeds of crime. So before you can answer A, 
you should have done your research on the little preamble they've given you. So you should know what the corporate vehicles are, how they are used, how they are misused, why they are misused, <coughs> and what research has been done and documented by international bodies as to the misuse of these vehicles. That's your research. Then they say using typologies, and typologies again means using the sources from the international bodies. FATF, CFATF, OECD, IMF, all of those. Then B, it says examine the measures that might be taken to reduce the extent and weight that criminals use these corporate vehicles and in so doing, examine some of the difficulties in implementing a regime of transparency of beneficial ownership. B has two parts to it. One, you have to give them the measures, and be careful because the measures that you refer to have to align with the misuse. And then it says, in doing so, examine some of the difficulties in implementing a regime. So when you implement a regime, you're talking about from a country level. And that's 65 points. Then it has a part two. What protective framework should a firm put in place? So you move then from a general to a country specific, then to a firm perspective. What protective framework should a firm put in place to guard against the impact of a potential sanctions breach? So then you have to do some research. What are the sanctions that can be placed on an entity? And you have to be able to give examples. It's due long after I'm gone. So I will wish you good luck. Business day of our last class? No, 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 it was me. So this paper is going to cover units 1 through 7. This is not, it's just going to do 6 through 9. That's on the sanctions regime. So I should expect by February 21st, you should have your first draft.
jurisdiction where corporate vehicles have been misused more and there are more articles and there have also been sanctions on countries and you didn't mention them. Yeah. So remember when you write these examples, it's not just the Bahamas. It's all other jurisdictions writing the same thing and the best ones are the ones that are getting paid. Three starts off by saying, what is money laundering? So, without even reading it verbatim, some people have read, what do 
to you is money laundering. I'll stop it, Sarah. Whenever you hear about money laundering and you see money laundering in KML, always remember it is a process. So in your mind, you're looking at from point A to the finish line. It's a process. Okay? So what you said was correct, but it is a process, step by step. And that's why it's so difficult to charge people for money laundering. Because if you're missing a step, you can't connect. So it says money laundering is the process by which criminals attempt to conceal the true origin and ownership of the proceeds of these criminal acts. The criminalizing of the handling of criminally derived property is therefore designed principally to take the profit out of crime by ensuring that the proceeds of crime can be recognized, reported, traced, and confiscated. So in the Bahamas, we have all of this slew of legislation, and the CFATF said what, Brian? There we go. There we go. No convictions. So the purpose of having all of this legislation is for recognition, number one, reporting, tracing, and confiscation. That's the purpose of all of this legislation. And then it goes on to tell you that it's recognized that the global efforts to prevent money laundering is only as strong as the weakest link. In this global world, everything is electronic. So any jurisdiction that has a weak AML framework, criminals will target that jurisdiction. So international initiatives designed to encourage, and in some cases, cajole national governments into taking or strengthening measures to prevent the laundering of money within their borders are essential. So that is why you have the international bodies and then you have the sub-bodies. So you have the FATF, the CFATF, and their job is to make sure that each jurisdiction has a framework for money laundering and terrorist financing and that those laws are effective. So what is terrorism financing? No, she won't tell me. She wants to tell me. <coughs> what? I guess terrorism financing is where the money, the money is paid to legitimate purposes, mm -hmm. so to wages, etc. But it's used to finance acts of terrorism. Yes. And everybody remembers 9/11, mm -hmm. even though it's a conspiracy that the United States did it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so terrorism may involve funds raised from legitimate sources such as personal donations, profits from businesses, charitable organizations, as well as from criminal sources such as drug trafficking, smuggling of arms and other goods, fraud, kidnapping, and extortion. So what's the difference between the two? Money laundering and terrorist financing. There is a difference. What's the difference? Money laundering would be, it's derived from criminal proceeds mm -hmm. only, mm -hmm. whereas terrorism can come from criminal and legitimate proceeds. Yes, yes. Good? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you think we have any terrorist financing here? So it says terrorists use similar techniques to money launderers to evade the attention of the authorities and to protect the identity of their sponsors and of the ultimate beneficiaries of the fund. So you can't say it doesn't happen here. We just don't know because it moves through the chain. So what constitutes an AML and CFT framework? Look at the bullet points at the bottom of page four. 
First is that the Hoffa framework and AML CTF framework, like the Bahamas, you must criminalize money laundering and define the underlying criminal offenses. How did we do that? Hmm? Yes, the proceeds of crime act. <coughs> Criminalize terrorism financing. How did we do that? Yes, Brian. Yes, you know. How do we criminalize terrorism financing? Anti-terrorism act. Yes. Defining which businesses are subject to the AML CFT laws. How do we do that? I heard it. Louder. co-partner right there. <laughs> she said it? Yes. Uh-huh. That was she said, right? And I didn't want to say it. Say it so they can hear you. The FDRA. Mm -hmm. Establishing requirements that reporting entities must follow. FDRR. Creating a government agency to receive information about suspicious transaction. FIU. See how smart you all are? <laughs> Creating one or more supervisory authorities to oversee compliance with the law. Mm -hmm. Securities Commission, Insurance Commission, Compliance Commission. And nominating the law enforcement and government bodies that will have access to the reports received. This is all enforcement. Who deals with fraud? Money laundering is not just. What else? No, we're in FIU. That's where you report. Law enforcement. The police. And the police has a special unit that deals with this issue. Commercial crime. Yeah. Commercial crime unit. So let's look at this now. What are the implications of money laundering? How does it affect the financial sector? What are we reading what's in the book? How do you think it affects the financial sector? <coughs> the reputation. Because we've been through this before. And what else? Because it's not just the reputation of the center. It's the reputation of the firms within the center. And no one will do business with a company that has bad reputation for AML CFT. Also the jurisdiction. So how does money laundering influence economic development? And when I say money laundering, remember that money laundering covers a lot of crimes. How does it influence economic development? How does it influence it? You've had money laundering in the Bahamas. How did it influence it? So negatively. Mm -hmm. Reputation wise. Yeah. How does it influence it otherwise? Didn't things boom? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. things yeah. boom. Funds are all over the place. <laughs> Buildings are all over the place. Everybody's flying a plane. <laughs> Everybody has a car. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it says criminals are continuously looking for new routes for laundering their funds. Generally, money launderers tend to seek out countries or sectors in which there is a low risk of detection owing to weak or ineffective anti-money laundering strategies and programs. So you can have the laws, but if you don't know how to carry them out, you don't know how to implement them, you don't know how to enforce them, then it's useless. Hmm? An example? The Bahamas. Plenty laws, no prosecutions. So what's the purpose? just to get off the black list in 2000, mm -hmm. just to get off the gray list, just to get off the pink list. Mm -hmm. How much? Some millions? Does it? For the amount of drug busts, and as a transit country, there's money. You know that, and I know that. I just came from Antigua. They arrested a man in his van. He had $11.8 million of cocaine 
just driving around with it in his back, back trunk of his van, as if he was carrying the dog in the back, <laughs> pulling up down, down, with all of that cocaine in the back of his car. So don't say there's no money laundering. Like they said to me, they took that, and out of 50 million gone. And the citizens were quite comfortable in saying that. <laughs> They said, because he's a man, he will go, he will be charged, he will go before the court, and you'll see him eating his kung salad in a week time. It's not his first, it's not his second, not his third, nor will it be his last. So what is that telling you? Of course, not that there is corruption. <clears throat> and drugs move. And if you read it, take it from the other side, from the user side, the United States, it's in deep trouble. Cocaine is just one thing. You have Russia bringing drugs, opiates. So you have a whole state that is on drugs. Whole state. Go up to Canada, go up to the North Park, all on drugs. Nobody's seen. And you have to supply your users. So it's a business. They gotta get there. So drugs are moving. You kill one um, cartel, they all are under, they move mm -hmm. on. It's a business to them. It's survival. And that's what you do look at. It's passing through. As the people are willing to take the chance. Did you see it in the papers today? For a thousand dollars? A university student mm -hmm. going to Orlando mm -hmm. and look where she put it. <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and she is the third and she is the third one to get arrested doing the same thing. In the twenty first century? Come on. You go risk your whole life and spend eighteen months in jail for one thousand dollars. She won't say that again? Hmm? Oh, the amount that so I always like to give these examples because I want you to be mindful that the that money laundering is real. It is happening. And you have to be able to detect it. Because the criminals are smarter than you. The smooth talkers are smarter than you. And the entities that fall under, who provide service, sometimes don't ask the question, being blind, because they want the business. But money laundering is taking place. It says, nevertheless, just as financial crime damages the integrity of individuals, financial institutions, there is a damaging effect on foreign direct investment when a country's commercial and financial sectors are perceived to be under the control and influence of financial criminals. So we don't have to be the growers of these plants. Everybody know we are used as a transit country. You don't have to be blind. You ain't got to be Stevie Wonder. It is obvious. How else is it going to get there? They're either going through the east or they're coming through the west. But you have to pass. And, and if you look at it, the Caribbean marries the two worlds together. Yeah. So no matter how you look at it, drugs passing through the Caribbean. And how the world is so small now with, with telecommunication, we know that it is happening. Because all you have to do is say that there is a patrol over at Nautical Mile 100 by 200, turn left. And they hide behind an <laughs> island, just like in the Paris days, and you cannot see the ship. <coughs> when they get the clearance, they're gone. So it's happening. Because there's no way you could supply a whole North America with drugs. It's coming through. And it's coming through also because there are corrupt people. Mm -hmm got to have the contacts. <clears throat> but and when you read this chapter, you will notice, when you get paid those illegal funds, you pay your bills. Mm -hmm. You do not bank it. 
but you can't buy your house until an expense comes. So money laundering again, I say, is taking place right here in the Bahamas. Huh? Or they go shopping. Or send others shopping. <laughs> buy jewelry. Yeah. Buy used cars. So there's a lot of things. Go on plenty vacations. Didn't you see 600000 in the paper? COB? Oh, okay. It was a $600,000? That's not like plenty vacation, lots of shopping, right? Okay. So all of these are things that you have to look at in terms of people and their lifestyle and money laundering. So it says the criminal offense of money laundering, as defined under international standards and therefore in most jurisdictions, can arise whenever a person knows or suspects that the property concerned represents his, her, her own, or others, page up on page seven, others, own or others benefits from criminal conduct and acquires, possesses, or uses it. When you read the proceeds of crime act, it is explicit as to what is money laundering. Once you know or suspect, you should report it. And if something is just blatant in front of your eye, then you should report it. Consequently, it says a burglar becomes a money launderer as soon as he or she completes the burglary and acquires some stolen property. And regardless of whether the burglar sells the stolen property or merely uses it personally, the property has still, in the eyes, been laundered. And a lot of people like to buy stolen items. It's cheap. It is important to understand that to be guilty of money laundering, you do not have to be involved in the crime that generated the money. You'll be guilty if you know or suspect that the property represents the proceeds of crime and you get involved in dealing with the property. You do not necessarily have to know who committed the crime, nor precisely what the crime was. Nor do you have to have made any specific agreement to help criminals or their associates benefit from the property. The test is whether or not you knew or suspected the money represented the proceeds of crime. But how do you prove that? That's hard to prove. How do you prove yeah. that? That's like conspiracy. Yeah. <coughs> yes. It's actually hard to prove. Yes, it's hard to prove. The intent is not easy in that case, those circumstances. No. But again, I tell you, money is being laundered in the Bahamas. And that's one of the reasons why. Mm -hmm. Money is being laundered. What, what were you going to say? No, but that's how you, how do you prove it? You just with the same thing you said. How do you prove mm -hmm. it? Said, that's why it's almost impossible to prove. Only way you can prove it is by following the money. And that's hard to find, too. And that's why the, the cases are so low. How can you find the money? That's the question. Most of the people involved in money laundering have a regular job. Get yeah. a regular salary. <coughs> Yet they are laundering money. Now, when a poor man on the road who you know don't have a dollar, all of a sudden has money, then you know. But remember that the poor man is like anybody who getting the minimum wage. He's not going to get that much. And if he takes the risk to get something bigger, most likely he will be caught. So the brain behind everything and the money is with those who have common sense. So it's difficult to find the money. But the money exists. There's no doubt about it. So it says, what underlying crimes constitute money laundering? Oh, you need to get these. Put this on the list. Thank you.
you see the legislature, you need to read the proceeds of crime. It refers to predicate crimes. So these are the underlying crime. Remember what it says that you don't have to know what the crime was in order to be guilty of money laundering. You don't have to know. You don't need to know that stage. But if it is the proceeds of crime, you're going to be charged. Okay? So let's look at some of these crimes. Participation in an organized criminal group and racketeering. That's for the higher boys. That ain't for y'all. Y'all ain't there yet. Terrorism, including terrorism financing. Y'all ain't there yet either. Trafficking in human beings and migrant smuggling. You all could be in that. No, we don't have some of that. We have plenty of that. That's trafficking. Because if you have watched a lot of movies with ships, you understand how it works <coughs> and why you can't see them. Because they're working by the wind and they're working by the dew. So it depends on the weather, you know what side of the island to travel on, and you are invisible. <laughs> and if you come ashore on the sand and you come off, and it's night, and you're already black, you're invisible. <laughs> come on now. You gotta be real. <laughs> exactly, they're out of wood. And all you have to do is when all of them come off, is what? Sink it. thousand dollars a head, fifteen hundred a head, you get on the floor to five thousand, seven thousand, five hundred, you got money. Yeah. It's a business. Only problem comes is when bodies wash up. Mm -hmm. Then we know that a ship passed by. But if you think about it, that's the way it's done. And that's the way pirating works. And it's still being done today. But it is illegal. Next one, illicit trafficking in narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. Now we know that happens. Marijuana, cocaine, heroin, opiates, methane, all those things are traveling all over the world. Illicit arms trafficking, well you have that here. <coughs> you have that here. Yes. And I'm wondering why no one could find the source. <laughs> they bring it in peace, peace, and they bring it in on these boats. Because when you go through the United States, when you go into the United States or from the United States, you have to open up your hand and there's a sensor. Watch B, necklace B, shoestring B, belt B. So they cannot bring through a gun. So where is it coming from? Boats. It's coming by boats. But now you're doing so this class, you have to understand. Because you're not looking for money laundering, not, not for money. Right. So you have to look at the underlying. Right. Right. So you're not looking for money laundering, not for money. Right. So you have to look at the underlying. Right. So you know, a lot of us are not educated what to look for. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is how come they come on both planes. And so it depends. So each each gun has its own parts. Mm -hmm. And you have to know. That's okay when you watch the television or the YouTube or whatever you always watch. You can see the different parts to assemble a gun. And the same way they learn it is the way you have to learn it. When I get this part, that part, and put them together, click, 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 I have an AK-47. The bullets are different. So you have generic bullets and then you have special bullets. If a bullet is coming from down Latin America, it looks different from the one that comes from Russia. And you have to learn these things. So that's homework for you. <laughs> for her job, yes. You got to learn. The parts of guns, and which part belong to which gun, bullets, and where they come from. Because I don't think all the guns are coming from the United States. Arms are made over in the Middle East. So they're coming. And I won't be surprised when governments contract, you know when you always have spillover? Like how we always get the, um, what do you call that, the clothes, that's not perfect. What do you call them there? The ones where Mr. Skip here and Mr. Button here, we get there. Yeah. 
when they produce whatever's left on the side, mm -hmm. then they sell it. The people that come in the boats and the yachts and the private planes, and they sell it here. The spoilage, yes. And that's what we're getting. So the next one is corruption and bribery. We got that here. We have that. We have that. Fraud. We have that. Counterfeiting currency. We have that. The minute the note comes out, it's counterfeited. We have that. I don't know where they find these copying machines from. Counterfeiting and piracy of products. We yeah. sell them. <laughs> <laughs> it's against the law. I call it Chinatown. <laughs> but I need to change that. I need to change that the Haitian village. <laughs> they only speak Creole. <laughs> then you have environmental crime. Do you have any of that? Yeah. You sure? You know they call environmental crime in Europe? Yeah. What? Gangs. Controlling movement of goods and services. So we have that here. We got that here. Yeah. Yes. But are they what are they moving? I think they're moving drugs and guns. Drugs, guns, human smuggling. Because I think they are the in between. They're the facilitators of human smuggling. So we got that too. Murder, yeah. grievous bodily injury. Yeah. We got that. Kidnapping, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Illegal restraint and hostage taking. No. Yeah, I ain't got the brains for that yet. You can't get the brains for that one yet. Robbery or theft? Smuggling in relation to customs and excise duties and taxes. <laughs> But I'll tell you this, the foreigners who come in this country, they have this down and on, how to smuggle it. <coughs> they know how to smuggle things in here. Even walking through customs. They know how to smuggle things in here. And they're proud of it. Tax crimes. We get any of that? Any tax crime? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trading and market manipulation? No. No, we all in there, yeah. You all less like things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> so it says here, who are the money launderers? We have the underlying crime. You have to put in your mind now, who are the money launderers? Who are the persons on top of these predicate offenses? Because you have to know for money laundering who to look for. It's just like in the police, how you do profiling, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. You've got to be able to think about what business are these people in, what character or person am I looking for that be attached to the predicate crime. Yes? Yeah. Politician? It could be anybody. Anyone. 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 Yeah. But there are certain people that just jump on out, like politicians, yeah. police officers. Immigration officers, people in the real estate, lawyers, all of them, bankers, tax evasion, accountants. You're none of them. No, he's a nobody. Okay. It says it's important to recognize that while a person you may think of as the money launderer is a person who committed or arranged the original crime, in fact, anyone who assists that person in the process of enabling them to use the property 
and conceal his origins, and that's not like some people I know, Brian, has played a part in the money laundering process. In the eyes of the law, they will be guilty of money laundering offense. If you set up or operate an arrangement, for example, a trust, that enables a person to evade tax and to have access to the untaxed money without being caught, then it's very likely that you too are a money launderer. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> so, how is money laundered? Where the proceeds of, of serious or organized crime and gold, members of both the financial and non-financial sectors are often used to assist in the laundering of proceeds of crime. These may include bankers, like you say, money service businesses, corporate service providers, trustees, lawyers, accountants, property estate agents. Some professionals knowingly offer money laundering services, while others provide assistance and then turn a blind eye, Brian, to the obvious. <laughs> but the majority of professionals who assist in the money laundering process do so innocently and inadvertently. So we back to what Sarah was saying. The poor little people need money, they tell them carry it, become a mule, mm -hmm. and end up in jail. $1,000. $1,000. $1, no, she will never get that either. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows there are three stages to money laundering, agree? Mm -hmm. yeah. Placement, layering, and integration. So let's start with placement first. Notice on the bottom of page nine, what did they tell you to read? <coughs> and threat assessment. And it gives you a little script that the first feature that money launderers and terrorist financials have used prevalently is cash and bearer negotiable instruments. Mainly because it's anonymous yeah. and lack of audit trail. But I'll tell you, people in South America love bearer instruments. They don't want their names on documents. Yeah. Yes, Brian. What? No, it's not illegal down there. No. Here it is. Okay, I know I read something. Yeah, here it is. But in, in yeah, Panama uses it a lot because they don't want their names because of extortion. Okay? People up in the Balkans and the Russians, they don't like their names on documents either. Because they are what we call ultra high net worth, not just high, real high. So they don't want their names on any documents. They don't want you to know who they are. But again, that's a place of corruption. Criminals look for, for as much flexibility as possible and are interested in avoiding detection. Cash provides that flexibility as it is universally accepted and can be used in more but little or no record keeping. So we know money launderers don't walk around with suitcases of money anymore. <laughs> That's past days. Everything is wire transfer. Using corporate vehicles. Many of the major sources of criminal proceeds, particularly narcotics trafficking, generate large amounts of cash. Criminals perpetrating some types of fraud need to avoid laundering cash, preferring instead to purchase goods and pay expenses with checks and electronic wire transfer. However, identity fraud, access device frauds, and bank <coughs> fraud can generate large amounts of cash. Other criminal activities which can generate large amounts of illicit cash include, but are not limited to, smuggling, corruption, bribery, extortion, and illegal gambling. <coughs> so we don't have illegal gambling anymore. <laughs> In cash-intensive economies, illegal money can easily be integrated into the national economy, and in such economies, large cash transactions may be very common, as individuals are more likely to conduct transactions in cash and carry a lot of cash around with them. So now you see, because the Bahamas had that FAT, CFATF report with deficiencies, what did the governor say he's going to do in the last couple of days? Who really? <coughs> Did he say he's moving to digital currency? Yes, moving to digital currency. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Why is he doing that? To keep track of money. Think about it. What have you been saying on the first time he's out of the six o'clock? 
Kirby keeps saying, money laundering is going. It's, it's, it's here. It's a process. And it is happening. We know from the predicate crimes that it's happening. But no one is filing. No reports. Yes, everybody knows that everybody is a small community. But again, it's the reputation of the center. And if you let the reputation go, it can't come back. So, when you look at it, it's a matter that has to be addressed for cash-intensive economy. But you tie into that that the commercial banks are now moving from a cash-intensive to digital. So they're digital, and so they move towards digital currency, so they'll be able to trace your money. They know when it come in, and they know where you use it. Everything will be digital. So there'll be no more cash around. If you come with cash, then something wrong. And it's a lot of fraud, yeah. So it says, in cash intensive economy, legal money can be easily integrated into the national economy. So it's going to be hard for you to bring cash. But then it brings another problem, because that means that the gaming houses are going to have to integrate into that same system. And we have some of the banks that will not accept money from gaming. So all of that has to be integrated in order for this to work. I just went to a seminar a couple hours ago, and the Bahamas is about to enter into the next phase. If you would have listened to the Minister of Education on Saturday, he spoke about the technology platform, the primary school going up. The Bahamas has been left behind again in the financial sector, because Venezuela, Russia, and Cayman has already started their digital platform. So the Bahamas is now working on their digital platform to get into what they call blockchain assets, cryptocurrency then. So again, we all move into that digital age. And again, even though it's not regulated, you'll be able to follow the money at any stage in the process. So it's going to be hard. So let me see what the money launderers come up with next in terms of having their own currency to buy and sell. So it says the main factor that drives criminals and terrorists to use cash intensive economies is desire to obtain, hold, and move cash without attracting attention to prevent detection and to distance a criminal from the crime. Now, you know, for terrorist financing, there's really no cash movement. That's all done digitally. Because you make a sponsor to some fund, some society, and it's, it's all electronic. And it just goes out and then it comes back in. And then they buy what they have to buy. Cash is easily acceptable and can be interchangeable with most goods and services. Can be used for value transformation.